Welcome back to the Warren Sports Matters Podcast. My name is Gianna Bocascio, and this is the second episode. Woo! I have gotten a lot of positive reactions from the first episode, and I'm really, really, really excited to continue. On today's episode, we will be talking about the WNBA and NWSL getting back into the group of things after this quarantine and stay-at-home orders are done and how the league will be changed this year. I have an ad to play, so instead of doing that in the middle of the podcast, let's just get out of the way, shall we? All right, let's get started talking about life after quarantine. Um, It's pretty crazy how we've been stuck inside for months, when it seems like years. A lot of things in my life have been canceled. Um, I know a lot of things in other people's lives have been canceled. People have been laid off. People have to work numerous jobs, um, taking care of their kids, finding a way to take care of their kids. But there's just got to be a way to get back to sports. That's what people are looking back. And they're deciding, okay, what are we going to do to get how we were before all of this? Funny thing is, is I think we're really, really close to getting sports back, um, even if we like it or not. In Germany, the Bundesliga is about to resume play next week, which is really, really exciting. Um, I haven't watched soccer in forever. Soccer is one of my favorite sports, and it's just amazing that Germany has decided and has found a way to do this without fans and with increased safety measures um that's amazing and I want to know how they got to that point Uh, I I feel bad for all the French players right now um after their president said no more sports and so they just stopped the season which is kind of upsetting in in my perspective but um PSG is the winner I guess but this isn't about men's soccer. This is about this is about women's soccer. Um, I also feel bad for the women that play in France. Um, but I'm assuming that if German men's soccer is starting up, that means women's soccer should be starting up as well. But don't quote me on that. I I don't really follow a lot of soccer um, around the world. More just English. Um, soccer teams and Australian soccer teams but that's about it so yeah on Twitter recently I've been seeing a lot of posts about um, WNBA players uh, missing training week um, training camp it's kind of upsetting as a fan to see that oh we can't start yet um, it, it's, I'm, I'm sad, honestly, if we're going to talk about emotions at the moment. I'm so excited to go to games this summer. I had my whole summer planned out of what games I wanted to go to. Um, I'm a big, big, big Chicago, uh, sports fan. So, except for the Cubs. I don't like the Cubs. <laughs> but I, I was excited to go to White Sox games, um, Chicago Fire games at Soldier Field. I was going to go to the one against Atlanta United. Their first game back at Soldier Field since... Actually, I don't know when. But I was, I was going to go. I was really excited. I was needing one of those patches they were giving away. Um... I was going to go to a bunch of Red Stars games, and I was really excited for that. I watched a lot of their games on TV after the World Cup that kind of... After watching the World Cup, like I said before, I think it really... I started paying more attention to the league, and after I started paying more attention, I started like knowing about the players and 
where they used to play and how they got here, learning about, you know, the top soccer schools, which would be a whole conversation for another day. Um, I actually, I interviewed a Red Stars player. Her name is Zoe Gorowski, and when I was talking to her, she went to UCLA. I was talking to her, I was like, okay, be honest with me, what is the top soccer school to go to? if you're trying to make it in the soccer world. She goes, UCLA. I'm like, okay. It's not North Carolina, not Stanford, not Duke, Virginia, any of those. It's UCLA, guys. You heard it from her, and you heard it from me. UCLA is the top soccer school. <laughs> oh, hopefully in the future I don't interview someone and they're like, UCLA, huh? You're a big UCLA fan. And they went to one of those schools I just listed or another school. That'd be really funny. But, also, NWSL training camp, like, that was supposed to happen. But it is kind of happening. There's some teams that are starting up, but, like, a social distance workout session, which um, multiple teams are doing. Um, they're doing it within uh, European soccer on the men's side. And that's how Germany decided that the Bundesliga was going to start, both one and two. Um, and then MLS is trying to decide if they want to play at the ESP, ESPN thing um, at Disney, which would be really, really cool. I don't know how the NWSL is going to do this, but their season wasn't interrupted like it was in the MLS. So... Maybe they can just have games without fans, but I I don't know how any of this stuff works, to be honest. There was this thing that I saw on the news about how, for Soldier Field, how they were going to have, like, a thermometer thing set up, where it's, like, you walk through it and it notifies, um if your temperature is higher than, like, 99 point something degrees. So I think that's how they're going to start measuring um, or taking fans' temperatures as they're entering the sports facilities. I think once they implement that and they get a vaccine and the stay-at-home orders are done and people start going back to school and they go back to work, um, we will be able to go into stadiums again and root for our favorite teams. I don't think that's going to happen for a while, to be honest. I don't want to be all negative, but if we're really, really looking at the statistics about when training camps are going to actually fully, like, be in place, I think that may take a while. Unless these teams are in states that aren't as infected, like Montana or Idaho or something like that, there is no way that there's, they're going to be playing. And, like, the systems they have to have in case someone tes tests positive or someone like on the coaching staff tests positive, I, I don't know how to, how, to, how to deal with that or process that. NBA is fighting over whether or not they should be starting their season. Players want to start the season. Some general managers and owners want to start the season. Some TV analysts think it's not a good idea. But maybe it's a good thing that the Lakers won't win a championship this year. Again, going on the men's sports. But it's, it's hard to think about. I get it, we're all sports fans, we like whatever sport we want. The NFL thinks they're going to start up in September. Is That's weird, first of all. H how did they think they were going to do that? They had to move the, the draft to online, like the WNBA did. And the NBA may have to do the same thing. They postponed the draft until August. Player workouts are going to be online somehow. So these sports teams, sports leagues... I think they should all come together and figure out a solution instead of doing everything on their own. Yes, I know that different commissioners are on the phone with the awful president that we have. 
which did not include the NWSL, by the way. That's a shame. That's a sports league. But whatever. I think there should be a universal plan that they come up with something together so that we can all watch sports again within the United States. Yes, there are sports stuff happening around the world, but some people really aren't interested in that. Even though soccer is the most watched sport in the world, it is not as appreciated in America. That's the honest truth. Unless you're a part of the American Outlaws or a fan club by a European team or an NWSL fan or MLS fan or, oh my god, what's that other league in the United States that they have? I am drawing a big old blank. I know the team from Utah won the title last season. I can't remember. I'm I'm going to lose my mind over this. But anyway, they they weren't included in it. Um but like these sports leagues need to come together. And I think that's the universal message here. I want to see sports as much as the next the next person. But it'll be a long time, and I'm okay with that. I've been playing a lot of FIFA, um, because I, again, soccer is my favorite sport, and that kind of helps with missing soccer right now. But also, not everyone has access to, like, an Xbox or a PlayStation or a Nintendo Switch or wherever you play your video games. Missing sports is uh, is tough for a lot of people right now. It's the only thing that gave them pride and joy. But we're all missing it. I think it's okay to be sad. But hey, if you miss it, why don't you just play it yourself? Go outside, dribble a soccer ball, go shoot some hoops. I mean, what do you want me to say? One thing I'm worried about being canceled or moved again is the Olympics in Tokyo. Again, with these seasons not starting up right away, that kind of takes time away from players. Um, And there's a lot of players in the NWSL that compete for their countries. Same in the WNBA. um, Same in the MLB. um, NBA. NFL doesn't count because it's not football is an Olympic sport. But it's it kind of questions whether or not we're actually ready for sports in general. There's I don't know who said it, but someone said that if we start right away without any training camps or if we just go into it, a lot of people are going to get hurt. So instead of starting right away, have a two-week training camp to get everyone back into shape. Because a lot of these people, um, they don't have the right materials to practice their sport. So even when I said earlier, you know, if you just miss a sport, go practice it. Not a lot of people can afford a hoop in their driveway or don't have one. Maybe they could afford it. I mean, who knows? But they don't have a hoop in their driveway. Or maybe they don't have goals set up in their backyard. Or don't have a fancy training facility at their house. So it's hard to only just do push-ups every day instead of practicing the skills you need for your sport. That being said, players should be keeping up um, with training. Regardless of if it's an ab workout, a lower body workout, upper body workout, um, doing yoga... They need to be doing it. If they're not, they're they're in for it. <laughs> they're going to get injured so quickly. I mean, it it's kind of sad if, if you're an athlete, a professional athlete, and you're not working out right now. I hope everyone is. Even college athletes. Um, speaking of college athletes, spring sport athletes... They get to play again. They get to come back for their fifth year, which is awesome. Um, 
I don't know if people are going to take up that opportunity or not. But if it was me, I would I would definitely do that just to get my senior year back. Um, that's amazing that they allowed that. It's kind of sad for winter sport athletes. You know, basketball, we really wanted to see someone win that championship. I was calling Oregon all the way. Sorry, South Carolina. I'm a huge fan of Don Staley. But, whew. Kelly Graves, my guy. One of my favorite coaches now. Um, he deserved that championship. Um, Sabrina Unescu, Ruthie Hewart, um, deserved that championship. And it's, it's a shame that they couldn't go for it this year. How did we get to this topic? <laughs> Oh, I was talking about the fifth year. Mm, okay. I know this whole point of this episode was to talk about training camps, and I definitely got away from all of that. Barely talking about it. I'm sorry about that, by the way, if you really, really wanted to hear about training camps. Um, I feel like teams on social media have done a great job about posting and doing player lives and player Q&As trying to get their fans involved still, doing giveaways, um, interacting, even, like, Connect Four <laughs> on Twitter or something like that, that's, that's, that's amazing. I love seeing that kind of content, and that goes for any sports team. Um, I wish they did that more in this season, um, but I, I love the content on Instagram and Twitter that they're posting. It's really cool that they're still trying to become more involved with their fans, especially with smaller leagues like the NWSL and WNBA. There's been a lot more fan interaction. Um, I know that the Chicago Red Stars have been doing player lives a lot. Um, even the teams are on TikTok now, which is kind of funny. I think we can talk about TikTok on a whole number up, a whole another episode. Um, I would like to complain about <laughs> people joking about being WNBA or NWSL wives um, or husbands. Like, like it's a funny joke. Oh, you're supporting your wife um, by getting three jobs. They don't need you <laughs> if you're going to try and be like that. But I... It's just really sexist and, and not necessary. They're doing something they love. They love um, while these dudes try and be funny and joke about something that they don't know anything about. <laughs> but anyway, I I'll touch on one more thing with the whole training camp sit- situation. Like I said in the, uh, the previous episode, teams are. Uh, and WNBA teams are paying for health insurance, which is supposed to happen during training camp. But they didn't do that. They decided, oh, we're just going to do it now, which is really, really cool. I cannot trust enough. That is awesome. I'll mention it again in this episode. But I, I think that other teams should do that, too. Especially for rookies. I don't know what the NWSL does with that. I just I just read a lot of stuff on Twitter about the WNBA more than um, the NWSL. But, yeah. One last thing I want to mention in this podcast is how, you know, people are protesting about this coronavirus outbreak. If you're listening to this in the future, <laughs> I'm sorry with this whole quarantine mess that I keep talking about but I can't stress this enough I don't understand why people are protesting um I know this has nothing to do with women's sports I get off topic a lot maybe I should just call this the I get off topic a lot podcast I'm sure someone already has that name but if you want your stuff back like sports going out to the movies, getting dinner with your family. All this will be done by staying inside. I don't know what you need to go do right now. 
Like, yes, graduations have been canceled. Proms have been canceled. Weddings have been canceled. You can't go to funerals right now. But in places where cases are rising, and I mean rising, which is due to testing that is being done. Also, if people didn't know, um, it's really stupid to, to protest something like this. Um, if, it w- if it was, um, if it was something worse than this, would people still be protesting? Like, if this was a really, really deadly virus, even though that's what it is anyway, if it was ten times worse than this, would people stay inside and not complain and protest and bring guns and threaten to shoot politicians? Really? That's stupid. I want sports back as much as the next person. I've said that before. If you want sports back, stay inside. Wash your hands and wear a mask. I think it's kind of stupid that I've been inside for three months. Did it make me want to do my homework? No. Have I done it anyway? Yes. Did I want to go see my friends? Yes, of course. Have I gone and seen my friends? Yes, but from the safety of my car. And what did I do when I got home? Every time I go um, drop off groceries at my grandparents' house, well, when I get there, I wash my hands. And when I go back home, I wash my hands. It's called protecting yourself and protecting others. The reason why we wear the mask is to protect others, not to protect ourselves. And if you can't follow these simple rules and guidelines, then you're crazy. Straight up facts. You're just crazy. I see excuses about people wanting to see other people's faces. Okay, what's wrong with looking people in the eyes? You don't need to see everyone's whole face right now. A mask is way more important. And people are forgetting about high-risk people. It's crazy how people are selfish enough to want to go back outside. And how they just want to go back to their normal lives. When people are fearing for their lives and are staying inside so they can protect themselves. I personally don't know anyone that's high risk besides, you know, my grandparents. They're old. Everyone's grandparents are old. I mean, that's common sense. But there's people with certain diseases and, like, cancers that they can't go out or they shouldn't go out and won't go out. Because they're scared that they're going to become infected. If there's anything I can say before I end this episode. um, Just be careful. And think about others before you think about yourself. Thank you for listening to this episode on the Women's Sports Matters podcast. If you would like to check out more awesome content, come back every week for a very new episode. I'm your host, Gianna Mel Castro. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at WSM Podcast. That's at WSM Podcast on Twitter. Also, give us a follow on Spotify. We're on some amazing platforms right now. We're on Anchor, which is the program I'm using right now to record this podcast. We're on Spotify. We're on Google Podcasts. You can check out a list of of the websites I'm on and podcast apps that I'm on on my Twitter. So, if you're from Spotify or Google or any podcast app, subscribe to my podcast or follow my podcast. Like my podcast. Review my podcast. Give me some feedback, people. This is only the second episode, but I'm really excited to continue. Um... I'm your host, Gianna Mel Castro. Remember to wash your hands and wear a mask when you go outside. And don't be one of those stupid idiots protesting because you're stuck inside. And that's on being a Democrat. Okay, not to get political or anything, but wash your hands, wear a mask, 
This is a bipartisan issue. Quarantine club. This is the Women's Sports Matters podcast. And I'll see you later. Thank you for listening.